This podcast is a proud member of the UUOP Network. Open oh, it. Let me get it. Oh, wow. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> that sounded really yummy. <laughs> I know. That was crazy. Welcome to season four of Russia Fear Podcast, where we chat all things Halloween Horror Nights, Universal Orlando's premier scare event. Tonight for episode nine, we are chatting all about the newest HHN 24 IP house announcement for Orlando and Hollywood, along with the two new original house announcements for HHN Hollywood. So now, let the mayhem begin. What a rush of fear. Well, hi. Good morning. <laughs> good evening. Good afternoon. Good wherever you're listening this to. Um, it is evening for us, which is very fun. But I'm not here alone today. I'm here with my two co-hosts. I have Michelle. Hey, hey. And I have Kenny. I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters! <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> well, we're we're all here. We made we it. Are. We did it. We made it through the week. Yeah, Ugh, barely. It's, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it was a long week, wasn't it? It was. It really was. And I don't know about you, Michelle, but it's been raining in Florida like bad like yeah there's always those like three o'clock summer showers but because of how hot and humid and like soupy it is outside they're just like it started raining at two and it just now ended so it's no longer just like your quick drizzle it's like a full-on hurricane but you know what i'm happy about this because last year we did not get our scheduled afternoon thunderstorms and it was just hot and dry all summer, and it was weird. Yeah. And it was kind of scary, actually, because I was like, what the heck happened to the thunderstorms? Where'd guys, they go? So I was in Orlando last weekend. <laughs> I was oh, there, yeah. Yeah, I was there with my sister. I took her to Universal for the very first time ever for her 60th birthday. And so it was Dang. her and Ooh. then Krista and Audrey, just the four girls, girls trip. And, you know, mm-hmm. it didn't rain, like, at all. Really? At all until hold on. Oh. So we had we had planned we never do water rides. Me and the girls never do water rides. Literally have never have not done rips off falls and Popeyes for a decade. Right. Um but my sister loves water rides. And we hardly ever go in the dead of summer. So I was like, okay, it's hot. This is the perfect time to do some do some water rides. So we planned our last day, which was Saturday to prepare, like go into the park with our swimsuits on with like clothes on over the, over the swimsuits and water mm-hmm. shoes prepared to do water rides. So we go in, we do our thing, eat lunch, whatever. We're heading to start our journey at Jurassic park. And what happens? It starts pouring rain, like out of the oh, blue no. pouring rain. And we're like, well, I mean, we're already in our swimsuits, whatever. So we're walk, we're like the dumb asses walking in the, in the rain, you know, where everybody else is trying to hide. <laughs> we're like, yeah, yeah, that can be fun sometimes. Yeah. I actually kind of like we're, that. Yeah. We were like, well, whatever, you know, no big deal. However, what rides close when it's thundering <laughs> and storming outside? <laughs> the water rides. The water rides. All outdoor rides. <laughs> All the outdoor rides, including the water there's, rides. There's only... There's only like four rides in all of Islands of Adventure that are open during a thunder storm. Yes, we know this now because here (laughs) we are soaked in our swimsuits thinking that we're badasses. Crud's like, yeah, whatever, we're we're good. But then we had to wait like a freaking hour outside the entrance to Jurassic Park to get on the ride (laughs) because all the water rides shut down. We were like, what the hell? What rides would that be? That would be Cat in the Hat. Wait, Cat Cat in the the Hat, Spider-Man. Kong and Forbidden, Forbidden Journey. Journey. Yeah. yeah. Which wow, we weren't going to like backtrack all the way across the park just to do those because we'd already done them that morning. So we right. just yeah. kind of waited. We just stood and waited. That's why whenever. After that, like we actually loved Ripsaw Falls. 
Mm. Krissa it's wanted great. to do it over and over again. She loved it. Not a big fan of Popeyes, but what? No. Nah. Really I will say I rode fan. Popeye. I rode Popeye a few weeks ago, and it's not as I, I, they've let some of those animatronics and scenes kind of uh, not live up to their original glory. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still so fun. I love Popeye. I was, I, you know, I felt like I was supposed to get more wet from like the top, like from waterfalls and things. And I really didn't. It was like all just from water rushing in from below. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Eh, it was okay. Ripsaw Falls. Loved it. It was great. Anyway, that was Speaking my adventure of, last weekend. And, <laughs> well, well, on the topic of that and, and something that is a little on topic for what we're talking about today. Did you see... I'm sure you talked about it on UUOP, but did you did you see Sensational? <gasps> yes, yes, Ugh. it's so I good. I haven't seen it yet. Oh Ugh. my god, Maddie! I think we might go on Monday because our days off have been super wacky, um, and so we haven't had a chance to. So I Ugh. think this Monday my, is my our heart first day off together. Heart fluttering yeah. thinking about it. It's it very, so it's very good. good. I keep trying, like I keep seeing spoilers, and I'm like, no, 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 just like two more days. No, don't <laughs> don't watch spoilers because, and yeah. I didn't either. I was like, nope, I want to see it in person. Yeah, it was so good. Kenneth and I are disagreeing because I personally feel that it was better than Marathon of Mayhem. However, yeah, it's only I, because I, of the drones. If 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 Mayhem. If they could redo Mayhem, but throw some some drones in the sky along with it, then it would be still up there. But what they did with the drones, ugh, so good. I think Marathon of Mayhem just hit harder for me because of one, the HHN at, just the, the atmosphere, the the mm-hmm. just the the energy in the air that is uh, Horror Nights, um, but also just not knowing what a Halloween Horror Nights Lagoon show could even be right Um, like this is definitely and and i'm no no shade on cinematic celebration right like that one i loved it it. no 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 no. i love cinematic celebration it was great (laughs) i did not like them no no i did not like them the lagoon show that ended what like last year that one you didn't like it Mm -mm. they were i mean they were why not they were okay I don't know. It just didn't hit. Why are you saying it they? It was one show. What do you mean? What are you talking okay, about? That, any, any, of, any of the Lagoon shows prior to Marathon of Mayhem and this one, I haven't liked any of them except for Marathon of Mayhem. And now, oh, do you remember the one with the big spheres in the water? Yeah. Well, I kind of not really, but I remember the spheres. Oh. I really liked the previous Lagoon show. I thought there were parts of it that didn't really work because they were not uh, music driven. They were like action and dialogue driven. And that doesn't really make sense in that setting. So I think what this show does better than the previous show is that the whole thing is music driven. It's all about music and it's so good. Right. And you know what? The the thing also that I think is a big difference with this one versus some of the past ones is that the projections on the water don't matter. I mean, they, they're good if you're in the right spot to be able to see them. However, I wasn't even like directly in, in the very, like the front or the middle. I was kind of off to the side behind some of those big boulders. So I wasn't at a great angle to see the projections on the water very well, but it did not matter a bit. And yeah. some of those previous ones, if you couldn't see the projections, it really like didn't work. Huh. Yeah. This one did. Th- that's uh, that's. That's kind of the same point I was making, just in, a, yeah. in like focused on a different exactly. element of it. You know, exactly. like there were parts of it where it was like if you couldn't see what was being projected, then you're like, or or if like this, it was windy and the screens were like getting fuzzy, yeah, yeah, and, and like blurry, and like the projections just weren't clear, even if you right. did have a good spot. Then it was like this kind of is nothing, exactly. and like the new show doesn't, the new show doesn't have any moments like that because it is just about the music. It's and so music heavy. Yeah. Everything is supporting the music rather than yep. the music supporting the visuals. Amen. Yep. It was so good. And I'll, I've said this on UUOP, so I apologize for those who already heard me say it. But this is how good it was. I have a 13-year-old now. You, uh, We all know what 13-year-olds are like, especially in today's <laughs> age with smartphones. So it's the end of the night. She's tired and grumpy. Her feet hurt. She wants to sit. She's sitting behind one of those big boulders and where the show starts. And I'm like, Krista, get up. She's like, eh. she's sitting down there looking at her phone. Within five minutes, the girl 
is looking up and she sees the drones and she's like, what? And then she stands up and the rest of the show, she's smiling from ear to ear, videoing with her phone instead of looking at TikTok and dancing to some parts and singing along to some parts. Like it got my 13 year old out of her grumpy 9 9 p.m. funk. Wow. Nice. Yes, which is like the biggest compliment you could have out there for <laughs> un- Universal Creative. That's the biggest compliment ever. <laughs> My goodness. It was Definitely. so good. And one of the parts in that show, and the reason I brought it up, is uh, Ghostbusters. And it's yeah. very fun that it's there every night. Every night, <sighs> Ghostbusters in the park. I got goosebumps just thinking about that part. <laughs> oh, it is really so good. good. I, can't, I can't tell you why, Maddie. I don't want to spoil it. But I was like, ah, that's so good. <sighs> I'm so excited. It was so good. Well, let's talk more about Ghostbusters. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Tell us about it, Michelle. I shall. Okay. If there's something strange, if there's something weird, an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force that threatens to destroy the world and all new haunted houses inspired by Sony Pictures' latest film, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, debuting at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights at in Orlando on Friday, August 30th, and in Hollywood on Thursday, September 5th. In this bone-chilling haunted house, the Ghostbusters must team up to save the world from a second ice age. A new specter, Garaka, is that how you pronounce that? I think so. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Garaka, Garaka. okay. Has escaped from an ancient artifact. He'll stop you cold with a whole army of ghosts. Try not to freeze in fear as you dodge spears of ice, and he freezes people solid before your eyes. (laughs) (laughs) have you guys seen this movie yes yes i have not seen it yet so i need to (gasps) need to do i have it i have it playing on my tv on mute right now are you serious what (laughs) yeah it's right there that's so funny but i also saw it in the theater uh i thought it was okay (laughs) is it house worthy yes i think so I'm going to be intrigued to see how they do it. Like, and this isn't a spoiler because Garaka is on the Horror Nights t-shirt. Um, but like, dude's tall. <laughs> like, that guy yeah. is so tall. So is he going to be on stilts? Or is he going to be like some sort of projection? Is he going to be a puppet? Mm. I've, I'm, I'm so intrigued to see tall, what they do with him. long arms. Yeah. Just very stretched, stretched out person. I gotta yeah. see this now. Okay, hold on. I'm looking him up. It's gonna be it's like, here in um, the, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's here a, in our in our document, Michelle, uh, on the merch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he, it's gonna be like Maleficent in Phantasmic. Oh, oh. When she gets like raised up the first time, and she's like waving her wand around, but then like the stage goes black and then the dragon pops out. That's yeah. going to be Garaka. Is, is he really that person. big? Like that big? Yeah. Over uh, the ages? No, no, not oh, that okay. big in the movie. Um, in the movie, it, it, he's probably like 10 to 12 feet tall, maybe yeah. a little less than that. I hope they put some on But still very tall. Yeah. Very, very tall. I'm so excited. And a cold house. I always love, there's something about cold houses Anything mm. to do with like snow or mm-hmm. ice or like the Yeti house or, um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, oh, and they but, feel so good when you're so hot in Halloween. Yeah. They don't feel so good when after a rain though. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no they do not. But, so since yeah. I haven't seen this, like, what do you expect this house to be like is it going to be silly is it going to be any scary at all like what do you Um, measure it to be i think it's going to be pretty scary the movie yeah it was ghostbusters but like there were a lot more serious topics and a lot more serious moments and i feel like there weren't as much like comedic moments as many of the other Ghostbusters movies. yeah yeah i agree i think this is maybe the least funny ghostbusters movie that there is Mm. yeah Um, okay which is crazy because you have like guest stars like Patton Oswalt and Kumail Nanjiani and like they're not really funny in the movie. Oh, Kumail is pretty funny, but like the yeah. movie does not focus on the comedy at all uh, no. in this one. That's cool. Um, it's like a side thing. I can imagine going through 
uh, Winston's like lab where he has all the ghosts captured. That would be pretty mm-hmm. cool to go through. Um, maybe the frozen firehouse from the, the cold open of the, the very cold open, the frozen open um, <laughs> of the of the movie uh, where they first discover the the orb thing that Graka is trapped in. Um, I don't uh, know. Yeah, just the other life, the the ghost hemisphere, whatever you want to call it. Right. That um, what's her face goes to. I'm so tired. <laughs> but the girl with the glasses. Uh, yes. But the she like goes over and whatever. Something yeah. like that, where like everything's oh. like blue. Oh that was, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, super yeah. descriptive, Maddie. Thank you. Hey, yeah, we're trying. You got. You haven't seen the movie yet, Michelle. So no spoilers. <laughs> yeah. The girl yeah, with the yeah, thing yeah. and the blue and the glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people okay. who've seen the movie will get sounds, it. Sounds terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> sounds terrifying. <laughs> There's gonna be. I hope some some uh, ambiguous teen angst. Oh where yeah. They're, they're trying to say something without saying it, you know, type of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> In this movie. A movie for the uh the unspoken LGBT people in the world. <laughs> yeah. Go us. Nice. Woo woo. Yeah. It wasn't stated, but it was implied. <laughs> oh yeah. It was very it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a some girl on girl crush yeah. happening in this movie. It's a win for the community. That might need to be the movie (laughs) that we watch tonight for family night. Yeah. Yeah. I bought it on digital. It was on sale for 10 bucks. And so I said, hey, yeah, I'll get this. I have all the rest of them. So I need this one too. Amen. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Before we continue on this topic, why don't we hear an ad from our sponsors, Port Key Vacations? I wish to go to Scotland. They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Where can our vacation wizards take you? Just tap the port key at portkeyvacations.com and let the magic begin. And we're back. All right. Um, we do have some more writing here, I believe, from the media. Uh, yeah. The press you know, release. Email. The press release. That's what it's called. So uh, let's let's read this. So the all new Ghostbusters Frozen Empire House is at Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal Orlando Resort. Bring the latest installment of the global Ghostbusters franchise to life, as well as iconic ghosts, creatures, and characters from the beloved classic series in authentic haunted houses that capture the horror and humor from which, uh, for which the films are known. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire will transport fans of the film franchise to New York City, where the uh, Spangler family teams up with the original Ghostbusters, who are now at the helm of a top-secret research lab for their ghost-busting enterprise. With the daunting discovery of an old relic that has set free the vengeful spirit of Garaka, who threatens to freeze everyone to death, Ghostbusters new and old must join forces to to protect their city and save the world from a second ice age. As guests venture through the haunted houses... They will find themselves in the sinister world of the supernatural, from Ray's occult bookshop to the Ghostbusters' new high-tech lab and containment facility to the dank New York City sewer system. Hmm. Fans will embark on this uh, petrifying journey alongside the Ghostbusters, encountering iconic ghosts whose slime and nefarious villains who are out for revenge all while trying to escape an army of ghastly creatures bent on cracking bones and turning their veins into rivers of ice. As they navigate their way through freezing and frightening conditions, the Ghostbusters will need their wit and humor to defend the city they love from a terror too chilling to believe. That sounds kind of fun. Yeah, this press release actually does a pretty good job of... uh, encapsulating the movie okay Mm -hmm. pretty nicely 
And yeah. I'm interested to see that it has like classic. I mean, there are classic ghosts in this movie, uh, you know, classics return. But I wonder how much of the previous movies will be represented here other than what's referenced in Frozen Empire. Hmm. Yeah. I like that it's going to take us into the sewer system. I always like houses that make me feel like I'm like underground. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily in a sewer, (laughs) but (laughs) the underground like environment is is a cool one to me. Yeah. Yeah. The best compliment you can give any house that takes place in a sewer is this house stinks. (laughs) I hope hope it doesn't. (laughs) But this Um, sounds cool. I like it. Yeah, I think it's going to be very different from the from the previous Ghostbusters house based on the original movie. I hope um, so. I wasn't a huge fan of the last one. Did you guys oh, like I really the last Ghostbuster? It. Did you? Okay. I like I, yeah. I loved it, I mean, but it okay. I think just because it did it such a I think it did a really great job of representing that movie and I love that movie. And so like was it scary? No. No, yeah. But I was like we're we're in Ghostbusters. Look, these are the scenes I know. And like, mm-hmm. this looks great to me. You know, like it looked right. It felt right. It was fun. It was silly. Uh, I thought it was awesome. I don't <laughs> think I, 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 I never had a full run through like where there weren't a lot of empty boo holes. So that's probably a big, a big um, determining factor for me as to why it wasn't that great. It was okay, but I hope this one's better. I this think this one is going to be able to different. focus more on scares. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, I like scares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause as 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 cool as and classic as some of the ghosts in the previous movies are, I don't know that any of them were ever scary. You know, like Zool no. isn't scary. The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man obviously isn't scary. Like the whole point of that is that it's funny. Right. Um so I feel like Garaka is the first Ghostbusters villain that is meant to be scary. Yeah, and he is scary. Because even what was his name? Ego Vigo, the Carpathian in Ghostbusters 2, like he that's he's not scary. Like, none of them are ever scary, but he, yeah. he kind of is this one. Yeah, he looks he like I said, I have not seen the movie, but according to the the image on the merch, which we're gonna talk about next, he he looks kind of creepy. Looks like some alien weird figure. Yeah. I just noticed horns. that Slimer's on this shirt too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So since we're movie? looking at it. Do you want me to spoil it for you? <laughs> oh, well, it, well, was he in the movie? Is that? Yeah, I yeah, he's that's in the a movie. yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't want spoilers per se, but yeah. Um, so since we're talking about the shirt anyway, let's describe what's on this merchandise. So we had a shirt and a hat drop for this new house announcement. Um, the T-shirt has. Four Ghostbusters, uh, you don't see their faces, so they could be anyone. It could be you. Um, in their new, like, winter, uh, you know, just just in case there was ever an Ice Age causing ghost, they had <laughs> at, the, at the ready these, like, uh, like Arctic Tundra. Matching, matching parkas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ghostbusting parkas. Yeah. Um, f- uh, in reference to Ray Parka Jr., who did the theme song for the original. Um, <laughs> Um, Silly. <laughs> <laughs> Only Kenneth uh, would know that. Our encyclopedia. <laughs> oh God. Uh, Ray Parker Jr. For yeah, just um, but anyway. Uh, and then Universal Studios—they're approaching the arch from Hollywood, by the way, not the one from Orlando. Yeah. The, uh, the Hollywood arch of Universal Studios, and looming above that is Garaka. Um, to Garaka's, uh, to Garaka's right, but left the way we're facing uh slimer is flying over there too the whole thing is frozen there's ice in the sky ice on the ground shards of ice shooting up all around uh looks cool that's okay i'm not a big fan of bi-coastal merch i think it's lazy and i don't really like it but i guess it is what it is makes sense Agreed. for them yeah and then we've got a hat which has the ghostbusters frozen empire logo at the bottom and then it has garaka um, above that really center focus with some ice like designs kind of coming out around mm-hmm. uh, around Garaka uh, this hat to me looks very cheap it looks like yes. they put a sticker on a Thank on a plain you. black hat I was gonna say the same thing <laughs> I don't think the design is bad but it just like looks 
poorly made. Poorly made, yeah. Like, is that what it really looks like in person? Or is it just I don't, the angle I haven't gotten to look at it. Probably. Because it literally looks like what Kenneth said. Like, somebody printed yeah. a sticker off of their cricket <laughs> <laughs> and, like, steamed it on to the hat. It looks terrible. It, and it's weird because they've been doing, like, trucker hats, which, yeah, the like, at the front of a trucker hat is a sticker. Like, that's just how, like, you don't really usually embroider the front of a trucker hat. Right. But this is, like, a trucker hat sticker, but not on a trucker style hat, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If if this was a trucker hat, it wouldn't look as bad. No. But it's, I think what's weird about it is like just basic baseball hat. Yeah. I think what's weird about it is this, the, the sticker or the decal, whatever you want to call it, has a black background Mm -hmm. instead of a clear background. So when you do put that on a black hat like it stand it looks like a sticker it doesn't blend in at all yeah mm-hmm. I don't yeah know. It's, a, it's an odd it's choice looking. yeah interesting interesting i won't be purchasing that one but <laughs> i like the sure shirt so but i don't really wear t-shirts anymore so like i do i am more likely to go for the hats now um but i will say universal's hat designs pretty much across the board are not great yeah i almost never like the hats that are for sale in the park i know and i noticed that too because i've started wearing more hats and um when i was there last weekend i purposely was looking for hats and i was only able to find one that i kind of liked the universal so. monsters ones are pretty cool there's like the children of the night hat with the bat on it oh yeah that and was pretty there's good. the werewolf one they're all embroidered and i love i love a good baseball hat that has embroidery on it i think it's so pretty yeah. and it looks so well done um, uh oh well i'll bring it up when we're talking on our next episode because we're talking about something else on the next oh, episode yes. but but uh hey listeners stay tuned for our our normal 13th of the month episode to hear my thoughts on another hat. <laughs> uh, that's a teaser, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just going to be waiting with bated breath until the 13th. <laughs> what, so, which hat is he going to talk about? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just don't even know. I can't sleep until he tells me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, oh, hat gosh. hat watch 2024. <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's oh, so goodness. funny. Well, that kind of covers all the Orlando announcements, yeah? Sadly, yes. for now. I'm still very much waiting for multi-night tickets. Oh yeah. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. But. When when did they drop? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> When did they drop last year? Keeper of the tracker. When did they drop last year? I don't th- I don't think that's on the tracker. I think oh. the tracker only tracks house um, announcements. House announcements. I mean, I'll go take a look at the tracker which can now conveniently be found at pangolinfl.com/hhn tracker. That is where you can always go to find the Gary Pounds Horror Nights announcement tracker. Uh but no, it, it only tracks uh, announcements of entertainment offerings, not like sales of things. Gotcha. Darn. Darn. Yeah. Oh, I do this every time. I can just look back at our Instagram. Oh, yeah. I know that we've asked this question in one of the previous like couple few episodes. So uh, I know that we have found it somewhat recently. Yeah. Because I post about it each time. <laughs> so I'm just scrolling back real quick to see yeah. when. Now I'm just looking at the tracker and looking at the names of all these old houses. Some goodies back there. <laughs> um, July 13th, 2023 was last year. Okay. So it should be so, soon. Yeah. So within the next week and a half, two weeks. <sighs> yay i'm ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well there's still one more land at um epic universe that needs to be announced so we'll probably do that and then maybe 
Or is it too oh, soon? Oh, you think they'll do that before they do oh. the tickets? I don't know. I, I think they'll think, wait. I, I think know. they'll wait on the land. Okay. I guess they could announce another IP and then drop tickets with that. True. Because that's usually how they do it. They dropped tickets, frequent fear passes, and Stranger Things on the same day last year. Okay. Hmm. Cool. That's a big day. Yeah, yeah really big day. <laughs> Really, really, really big Hollywood day. already has their multi-night tickets, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. We uh, talked about that on a different episode, I yeah. think, one of our most recent ones. Yeah, we did. I think I think the last episode we did. Yeah. Let me just say, when this next announcement that we're about to talk about, when I first saw it, I didn't know that it was for Hollywood. And I was like, oh. oh. I was like, no. I don't like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah damn it well let's I'm get into gonna, it i'm actually gonna be scared in this house and i was like oh it's in hollywood good yeah <laughs> i mean people go see it you never know um but this is our our first kind of house over at hhn hollywood announced for the year um at so least one that's different than one that we're getting here too oh yeah yeah that's true um so this one's called dead exposure death valley theme doesn't it seem like top secret experiments always go horribly wrong just as you arrive at a Halloween Horror Night? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have noticed that, actually. Yeah, that's crazy. Huh. Um, in Dead Exposure Death Valley, you'll wind through a covert government facility where officials are creating super soldiers Unfortunately, everything goes haywire right as you arrive, and you'll soon discover that instead of super soldiers, the facility has accidentally created an army of radioactive zombies. Oh, my God. Best of luck escaping. Yeah, no. Wow. I hate zombies, and now we've got, like, super soldier zombies? No, thank you. Yeah. Michelle, was Dead Exposure, the last time we had it here in 2018, was that when you still were... Yes. Closing your eyes and very oh, scared. Hell yeah. Um, I did not even want to go through this house. I was forced to go through it with Audrey. And literally I was like, Audrey, I'll go through it with you. But my eyes are not opening. So you have to lead me. Yeah. Literally did not open my eyes. I think I only did that house like maybe three times because it made me sick every time I did it. It I was would have pretty to, rough. Like, yeah. I would have to like sit down. I would get dizzy. Why? Um, lights. Yeah. And that's never happened to me before and it's never happened since. But it, I think it was just the amount that there was in this house was just too much. I did that exposure eight times, uh, Patient yeah. Zero. Um, mm -mm. In line for dead exposure, Patient Zero is where uh, Gary and I decided to, uh, instead of form a new band, continue Pangolin and uh, and build on what he had already done there so wow. i will always have fond memories of dead exposure uh patient zero but this is dead exposure death valley very mm -hmm. a, a, a different thing it doesn't seem like it's really continuing the tradition of the first two dead exposures in terms of the uh the strobe and the you yeah. know, that element of it. Well, I don't yeah. know. It's got, it, they're radioactive. So I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of strobe lights. Right. But the first dead exposure in, I want to say 2008, um, the premise of that house was a zombie apocalypse had, you know, happened. There was an outbreak of the zombie virus and this was in Paris and we were going through the photographs taken by a photographer of the outbreak. And so the whole house was all in black and white um, with black light reactive white paint. And so the, it was the strobes represented camera flashes. And you were going through the photography of the event that happened. And then patient zero... Uh, wasn't about the same thing, but it kept that same concept. And the way they justified it there was we are taking the zombie cure, right? The vaccine or the, the antidote to the zombie virus. 
Um, but one of the side effects is it causes uh, temporary blindness. And so that's why through that house, everything was black and white and we were only getting momentary flashes of being able to see what was around us. Mm -mm. Um, so that has been, a that's been kind of the defining element of dead exposure so far. We've only had two houses here and this is the third ever dead exposure house. I think it's really cool that they're continuing a series from here in Orlando over in Hollywood yeah, and giving cool. them their own version of it. I like that a lot, but I just hope that they're also keeping that strobe uh, blindness element of it. I'm picturing like Stranger Things, Hawkins Lab, when everything goes hay haywire and like the lights are out, but you like every now and then see the lights like flash on with the with the alarms, you know, like that's mm -hmm. what I'm picturing inside this facility. Mm -hmm. So like I still do think there's going to be some sort of strobes um, just because of the whole like radioactive element of of what's happening as far as what's causing the haywire but ugh. either way yeah I don't, I don't do zombies i don't like them <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't do zombies <laughs> I, don't. <laughs> I don't like them nope you turned into a cowboy <laughs> yeah we don't take Ooh. too kindly to zombies around these parts. Yeah. We don't like them. I don't like them. <laughs> like mm -hmm. the... <laughs> Have y'all watched uh, Fallout on Amazon Prime? No. Oh, man. It's good. It's really good. And I know that it's like a, I know it's a video game, but you sounded like the, the ghoul, the cowboy <laughs> ghoul from oh, the Fallout show. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a cowboy and he has like a really 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 like cowboy drawl and that's what he sounded like <laughs> okay. that's awesome it just uh, it i mean it reminds me of uh like the house we just talked about because it's yeah it's zombies too so <laughs> that's hilarious tee hee tee hee hee awesome. um and then our second house for hhn hollywood is uh it's the part two of the house that we're getting for the first time this year, but that Hollywood had for the first time last year. And that's Monstros 2, The Nightmare of Latin America. If you love the monstrous, the monsters of Latin America house in 2023, and who didn't, you're in luck. You'll get to further explore the terrifying universe of Latin America's horror folklore in this all new original house. In Monstros 2, The Nightmares of Latin America, La Muerta will return to guide you through a graveyard of mythic monsters, including the soul-stealing writer El Charo, uh, the supernatural dog-like spirit, oh goodness gracious. El Cadejo? Yeah. Yeah. What Michelle said. Uh, who roams quiet roads at night in search of prey, and the child-eating boogeyman... El Cucuy. Oh, nice. Yeah. I would have butchered those. I know French, but <laughs> that's about it. Wow. I'm excited Yay. for our version of Monstro. So is so our version is the version that they got last year. Yes. Right? Uh or is it slightly yeah? different? Yeah. I think I mean I'm sure it will be different. It'll be different because the houses I they're always different between the two. But as far as I know, it's the same monsters okay. that they got. Well, these yeah. monsters, cool. too, seem really creepy. Yeah, <laughs> a dog-like spirit. Ugh. And it's then they be like that. eating boogeyman. Uh, okay. Yeah. The dog-like spirit get is going to be like um, the, what was the, the murder cat from a couple years ago? Chupacabra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the, the dog-like spirit is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, yeah, I like that there's... I wonder how dog-like it is, you know? Like, will it be puppets like like our chupas were? Yeah. Um, this is I cool. So I'm glad that they got their own... Now they've got a few of their own uh, recurring series that they do because they've done Holly, Holidays of Horror a couple times. Mm-hmm. And now we've got a uh, monster monstros uh, coming back. So Hollywood is is getting on board with the uh, the originals. 
I think they must have done an original and it, it got the reaction that the originals in Orlando get. And they're like, oh, no wonder they're always doing their own stuff. People like it. <laughs> huh. That's fair. Right. Let's keep Ooh, it up. I, <laughs> I just looked up El Kukui and there's like so many iterations of him. So there's no telling what they'll make that creature look like. Ooh, hmm. goodness gracious. It says the monster is said to be formless, cool. faceless, and cruel and can take the shape of whatever its victim fears most. So it's a bogger. Ah. Oh, cool. Scary. Ooh. I like that. And then what about El Charo? El Charo. Let me look that one up. The soul stealing rider. So I'm guessing it's like a like a horseback person. Mm-hmm. Or it's Nicolas Cage as the ghost rider on a motorcycle. Ghost rider? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, well, Johnny Blaze. Yeah. Is it like the that second of like Ghost Rider movie horseman? is crazy? Uh, okay, El Chato looks like a skeleton version of a like a mariachi singer. Oh, and he's just riding on a horse. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. totally a dead mariachi <laughs> <laughs> on a horseback. Don't know oh, how scary I wonder that if is, that's but... okay. You know what? I just remembered. Uh, when I was growing up and my mom was watching Univision or Univision, as it's called in English, um, there was, no, I'm thinking of, no, 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 I'm thinking of it wrong. It wasn't El Charo del Ocho, it was El Chavo del Ocho. So never mind. Uh, yep, forget I said anything. But <laughs> I... I'm going to look up what El Cadejo looks like. Sounds like a Maybe this is what I'm thinking of. No. Where I feel Coco like there was a set? character. Coco was set in the afterlife of Mexican folklore. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So El Cadejo looks my... like looks like um, Sirius Black in his dog form. Ooh, he's like black with red eyes. That's so cool. He is scary. The uh, the Grim, right? Was that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we got a bogger. We got Sirius Black. Is there a Harry Potter theme going on here? Uh, yeah. Except for the, um, except for the El Charo. <laughs> yeah, there's no Mario. How are they going to put Potter. somebody on a horseback in a house? What do you think I that's going to be like? <laughs> it's like I want to see a real horse. Horses. Oh, a real horse would be crazy. That be what crazy? were you thinking? <laughs> Um, those like horses at the playground that they're like tethered by springs and you sit on it and <laughs> bounce, but it's kind of bigger and higher up and it looks like the person's on a horse, but they're really just on one of those bouncy things at the playground. That's fun. That's hilarious. <laughs> what if they got somebody, you know, okay. This, you, <laughs> you know, those Halloween costumes where it looks like you're riding on something's shoulders. <laughs> yes. So oh, it's God. like... <laughs> it's like two people in a horse costume, but the person who's playing the back legs also has the, <laughs> El Chato's real, like El Chato's legs sticking yeah. down, like the, like <laughs> he's riding the horse. Oh my god! That's, that's so what it funny. is. They put two people in a horse costume with a rider. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I ha what are they going to do, like, for real? If they can't just do, like, fake horses that are stagnant, just <laughs> put a scare actor on top, that would be really stupid looking. But they Last can't be real horses. He'll be standing next to the horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's not on the horse. So it's like a stagnant horse, but he's standing next to it. Okay. It's one of those little kid horse toys where it's just like a horse's head on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I have a friend who every year, her birthday's in July, and she has a costume party every year, and it's always a different theme. And last year, it was, uh, uh, like, fantasy-themed. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my roommate, we like to go, and uh, we do funny costumes for it. And I was like, you know what would be funny is if we, were, if we both were half of a two-person horse costume, but we're both the same half. So, like, we both are the back legs, <laughs> um like <laughs> that's funny. and i i tried finding a two-person horse costume on amazon and i couldn't find one anywhere 
Like they don't sell it on Amazon. The, like I didn't know how to find it. So I ended up not, we ended up doing something else, but yeah, that's my story. Weird. <sighs> Maybe you guys can be El Chadro. Who? <laughs> you and your roommate. Well, this year's theme is different. Oh, well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> As if they're really going to take, <laughs> take you. You mean like in the house? Yes. Oh, this is in California, Michelle. That commute? I'm joking. <laughs> little, little joking. Commute. Little joking, Kenneth. <laughs> the commute? <laughs> That's a week. God. Oh, end this damn episode, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think Kenneth needs to go to sleep. <laughs> the commute? All right. Well... I think that'll do it for this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. And we hope that we see you soon in the fog. And until next time and or next month, for more content, be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Rush of Fear and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Rush of Fear Pod. Well, that's me. (laughs) For more general Universal Orlando Resort news, check out our friends and UUOP network hosts over at the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, wherever podcasts can be found. And you should definitely be a part of each new Rush of Fear episode with our brand new listener submission segment. Send rushoffear21 at gmail.com an audio recording telling us your favorite HHN house, favorite HHN scare zone, and your favorite overall HHN memory that you have. The house and scare zone portion will be added to a running tally to see which is the overall listener favorite. And the favorite memory will be added to the outro of each episode. Yay! Oh, and Yay. be sure to leave your name, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be nice. Um, also, yeah. you can be part of a Port Key Vacations commercial. Just send an audio recording of you saying, I wish to go and fill in the blank. Then keep listening for your commercial to magically appear in an episode of Russia Fear and UUOP. Just email those recordings to podcast at uuopodcast.com. And also check out our brand new merch storefront and help support the show. Just head to uh, tpublic.com and search for Russia Fear Podcast. You'll find our page and all of our products. This storefront will be updating soon with some new items too. Yeah. Uh, hey, be sure to check out my band Pangolin everywhere that you listen to music online. Follow us on social media at Pangolin FL. Big news coming soon. We finished our album, so uh, release is imminent. Yay. Uh, so be, be on the lookout for that. Um, and if you could please leave a spooky rating and review on whatever podcast platform you are using, it would really help us out. And we'd love to hear from you, the listener. But before we go, here's a Rush of Fear listener submission. Hello, Maddie, Kenneth, and Michelle. It is the Podfather here. I am chiming in with my favorite house scare zone and memory from Halloween Horror Nights. I'm sure anybody listening to this who knows me knows what my favorite Halloween Horror Nights house is of all time, going back to 2019. Although Universal Monsters Unmasked in 2023 really pushed it close, but Michelle will know... Yeti Terror of the Yukon of 2019 was a phenomenal house. And I think it's memories as well of going through that at the first weekend with all our podcast family and then getting to go through it at like 1.30 in the morning with literally nobody else in that house is an experience I don't think we've ever had in a Horror Nights house before because who gets to have that experience, a singular experience of going through a house at your own pace unless you've got a crippled Tracy and you can go as slow as you want and that's great as well. I recommend that, it's cool. (laughs) Favourite scare zones? Scare zones are a tough one because the scare zones for me aren't really something that I hang out in that much or really care about. The, 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 uh, the things that kind of give me something to look at between the houses. But I think, and this is going to tie into my favourite memory of Halloween Horror Nights, going back to 2015, the 25th anniversary year, the Icon Alley down in Hollywood was amazing as far as like some great scares scare actors in there great but it was it was all about 
each icon having their own stage and doing their own little mini show. So you had the the usher, the caretaker, the director, and the storyteller. And if you hit it right, which we did, we were lucky. We had a friend with us who knew they were happening, and we just went from one to the other to the other to the other. And those shows were great. It was it was a scare zone, but also uh, entertaining. And you didn't have to spend a lot of time in there, which you, I find you do in a lot of scare zones to get the full story. And that one you didn't need to. Such a good scare zone. Although, honourable mention, Zombieland Double Tapped in 2019 was amazing. Um, But that's going to lead me into my favourite memory of visiting Halloween Horror Nights. My favourite memory of visiting Halloween Horror Nights takes place in Icon Alley. It was at Halloween Horror Nights 2015, the 25th anniversary. It was the first time we'd done an RIP tour. We had the kids with us. Our youngest was 11 and our oldest was 16 at the time. We tapped out at 1am. We were heading back out of the park through that Icon Alley section in Hollywood with friends of ours. I was taking some pictures and we were just kind of milling through and I looked over and our youngest and Tracy were having an interaction with the usher. And so I went over to them and we had a bit of interaction with the usher and the usher kind of gestured at our youngest saying, you know, I'm going to do my set piece for you. And if anyone hasn't seen that little set piece that the usher did, the stage that he had was set up with like cinema seats and a little cinema booth um, they would drag a guest out who disrespected the Universal Palace Theatre. He was gagged and tied up. They would tell him the rules and then he'd broken the rules and stuff. And then the usher would drag him into the little booth, smash his brains in with his flashlight. The blood would splatter on the window. And then a lot of the time that we saw this very specific usher would lick the blood off the window. When well, he told our youngest, I'm going to do this set for you. So they dragged the guy out, he gave them the spiel about disrespecting the Universal Palace Theatre. He drags the guy into the booth, bashes his brains in with the flashlight, the blood splatters on the window, and he wrote our youngest's name in the window and gave them a little heart and pointed at them. And it was just our friends who were with us were blown away. We were blown away. It's just Horror Nights has become this experience where it's it's a group experience. You don't get those one-on-one experiences very much, but this was a, an experience that was just about us, and it was something that I will never, ever forget as far as my experiences at Halloween Horror Nights go. And don't get me wrong, we have had many, many awesome nights, awesome experiences at Halloween Horror Nights, but that one will always top them. It was amazing. So there you go. That's my favourite memory of Horror Nights. Thanks, guys, for doing what you do. Viva la UUOP Network. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much, Lee, for submitting. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we loved we loved hearing your favourites. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've heard that story a lot, but never in such detail. So that was I, that was enjoyable. I like that. Aww. Yeah. I know. Yeah, so me too. Cute. I remember seeing pictures of it, I think. Um, Well, that wraps it up, you guys. Thanks for listening. The podcast has come to an end. Now get out. Bye. Bye. Bye.